The Buffalo Bills have fired offensive coordinator Ken Dorsey. We're going to break it all down today on this emergency episode of Locked On Bills. You are Locked On Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate y'all being here very, very much. I'd like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, folks, big news just came through literally 15 minutes before I hit record on this podcast, and it's that the Buffalo Bills have fired offensive coordinator Ken Dorsey, Joe Brady, the Bills quarterbacks coach, the interim offensive coordinator. And so we're doing an emergency podcast here to break it all down. I want to talk about the decision that was made to fire Ken Dorsey. I want to talk about Joe Brady as the new offensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. Some thoughts on Josh Allen. And I also want to focus in a little bit on what this firing doesn't mean, as I've seen the quick reaction from many on this decision. It's kind of weird to me, some of the places that some folks are taking it. But we'll get into that, and let's start with the dismissal of Ken Dorsey. He's been fired. And I guess I'm a little surprised that they did it during the season. I thought that the Bills might let it play out. Certainly the writing was on the wall the last six weeks. This offense hasn't looked good. And it's disappointing because that's the healthy side of the football, right? That's the side where you have your talent that you're expected to have. And defensively, not so much the case. And so it's underperformed. There's no question about it. Even if statistically it's been good, you, anybody with two eyes can watch this Bill's offense and realize that it's not reaching close to what it's capable of. You have execution errors on top of execution errors. And that's been a big conversation point for me within these all 22 review episodes, which is what I was working on before this news came through. So we had to interrupt that. And funnily enough, I just finished the offensive tape getting ready to start on the defense. Uh, But as you watch this, and even in this Denver game that just happened, it's execution error after execution error, mistake after mistake. And while you can point at players for sure uh, for not executing, not catching a pass, not making the right decision, fumbling, missing a block, when there's this much in terms of execution errors, you got to point it right back to the guy coordinating the whole thing and say, why do your players consistently not execute the way that they need to to win football games, right? So you can you can be disappointed in some of the players and some of the miscues there, but the frequency of the execution issues started to really put my eyes right back on Ken Dorsey. And so execution errors, lack of production, six weeks in a row, not against good defenses either, right? Like I think that's frustrating as well. You're not it's not like you're playing these great teams. I mean you're losing to the Broncos, you're losing to the Jag Jaguars. It's a good team. The Patriots are not. The Jets, I mean, the Bengals, the Texans just ran the ball for 180 yards on on the on the Bengals, right? Just you're just not performing. You're just not performing. And the problems don't go away. And that's what's frustrating. Six weeks, you see no growth, right? This lull has literally been six weeks long. And within it, you're not any closer to getting out of it. Turnovers, sloppy, sloppy operation. And you can get into the real details. I mean, you could talk about not enough play action. Last night against Denver, the Bills were down, what, 22% play action? If that's not above 30, I don't know what to tell you. Not enough under center looks for Josh Allen. Too much shotgun. And not playing and not coordinating an offense that has the ingredients necessary to maximize the talent. And so certainly Ken Dorsey's the fall guy right now. Um, and there's a bigger conversation to be had about the direction of this football team. If it's plateaued with the current nucleus, if, if bigger decisions 
aren't out there to be made. But for right now, this is what the Buffalo Bills are doing. They're letting Ken Dorsey go after a six-week slump that it didn't feel like there was any end in sight, especially with your next opponent being the New York Jets, one of the best defenses in the NFL, and one that, quite honestly, Ken Dorsey hasn't had much of an idea as to how to get his team to perform well against. And now that falls on Joe Brady. So welcome, Joe Brady. You're now the offensive coordinator. Your next assignment, the New York Jets on a short week. So should be interesting to see how that all unfolds. I want to talk about Joe Brady here in just a moment. I want to talk about Josh Allen and also what this doesn't mean, which I think is important for us to reference as well. But first, I got to tell you all about Jace Case. Folks, we spent a lot of time talking together, you and I. We get fired up on wins and losses, who's going to start, who's going to sit, coaching decisions like we're talking about right now. And I'm thankful for the connection that we have. And I want our chat today to be just a little bit more personal. So whether you're on extended travel, bracing for a major weather event, or limited by yet another supply shortage, you are covered, my friend. Thanks to our partners at Jace Medical, life-saving antibiotics, and a long list of daily medications can be ordered in a one-year supply, even ED generics for Cialis, Viagra, and Revatio prescriptions. So go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medications. And remember to use our promo code LOCKEDON at checkout for a discount as well. So if you or someone you love would like to get some peace of mind by having a full year supply of any daily medication, go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Remember, use our promo code Locked On for $20 off your purchase. Folks, you got to check out FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So Ken Dorsey out, Joe Brady in as the Bills' offensive coordinator. Of course, Joe Brady, the quarterback's coach, uh, got that job replacing Ken Dorsey, who was elevated to OC after Brian Dayball left. So there's a relationship there, Joe Brady and Josh Allen. Um, when the Bills hired Joe Brady, I felt like they'd be a good personality uh, combination. You know, they're both kind of quirky guys. They both like the offense, similar, um, you know, sense of humors. And now Joe Brady has an opportunity to coordinate this Buffalo Bills offense. And it is a huge opportunity for him, a major showcase opportunity, not just for himself and potentially long term holding this job in Buffalo, but for other opportunities that might exist out there, right? He's got a real chance here over the last seven games of the season to show a lot of what he has as an offensive coordinator. And he's stepping into a situation, obviously, where there's great familiarity with Josh Allen and what's going on with the offense. And he's got a very short period of time to put his own stamp on it and see if you can get some improvements. And I think for the Bills, it makes a lot of sense. Joe Brady was always the logical successor, even when, believe it or not, we talked about Ken Dorsey as a head coaching candidate because he has received interviews. Um, we always thought, yeah, Joe Brady's probably that next guy in line. And so if you're unfamiliar with Joe Brady, younger guy, uh, was the passing game coordinator for LSU, that historic 2019 team, right? Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, uh, Justin Jefferson, Terrence Marshall Jr., Clyde edwards helaire Like, they undefeated, won the national championship. I mean, I for my money, I think they're the best college football team I ever watched. Like in my lifetime, I'm, maybe there's some teams like back in the day that I never watched, but in my life of watching college football, the 2019 LSU Tigers, they're the best team I've ever seen. And obviously the talent speaks for itself, right? You'd expect any coach to be able to get a lot out of what he had in Burrow and Chase and uh, Justin Jefferson, right? I mean, first round picks everywhere, Clyde edwards Alaire, like a, a certainly a good situation. And that got him NFL looks really quick, right? I mean, young guy. And, you know, before he can blink an eye, he's the offensive coordinator for the Carolina Panthers. Now, that didn't last long. It lasted uh, about as long as Ken Dorsey did in Buffalo, right, a season and a little bit into the next season. And a tough situation for uh, Joe Brady in Carolina. And a lot of people thought that he was the fall guy and it was an unnecessary hasty decision by Matt Rule 
to fire him, but that's what happened. And you think about the situation there. I mean, it was year year two of that entire situation, which wasn't good to begin with with Matt Rule. Wasn't a great opportunity for Joe Brady to showcase himself. He's had NFL head coaching interviews. He's had offensive coordinator interviews. And the Bills now have him for seven games to run this offense. And um, I'm excited to see what it looks like. It, it, I know Joe Brady. I studied that 2019 LSU team. A lot of spread, a lot of five-man protections. I don't know how much of that's going to show up with this Bills team and how quickly, right? It's it's a tough situation, but he gets this opportunity. William and Mary background, you know Sean McDermott loves that about him. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how he can manage Josh Allen, right? I think that's a, a fair thing for us to get into. And, and for whatever you want to say about Brian Dable, there were plenty of people that wanted him fired while he was in Buffalo. Um, Brian Dable, I thought, did the best job of managing Josh Allen. And, you know, he's a stallion, right? And sometimes you need him to be a stallion. Sometimes you just need him to just do the smart right thing with the football. But I thought Dabes did a great job of managing Josh Allen on the field. And for Ken Dorsey, not sure if that was his strength, right? I don't think that it definitely wasn't because you you saw Josh not really take any steps, but really regress, I think, a lot in decision making and turnovers and some of the recklessness. And, you know, I think you you can c- contrast that to the way that it looked with Brian Dayball. You realize that Ken Dorsey didn't do a good enough job of that. Joe Brady, as the least experienced of any of these people that have now been Josh Allen's offensive coordinator, what type of what type of ability does he have to communicate and get Josh Allen in the right headspace to execute and play football the way that he needs to? That's going to be a fascinating storyline for us to watch, and um, it's going to be interesting. It's not like it's not like this is some old guy coming in that's coached football for a thousand years that's going to do it his way, right? This is Joe Brady, a young guy uh, that has some quirkiness about him, and you know, can he can he take charge and take command? And like that's what's going to be critical here: taking command, like very quickly proving what he is and I think the output that he gets out of this offense is going to be really really interesting to monitor and especially how he manages Josh Allen speaking of Josh Allen I'm really curious about his input here you know I think there's a lot of understanding out there that Josh Allen has a lot of say in this football operation and on one hand that's a great thing right you want your star franchise quarterback to have a lot of say in what's going on and that's been a criticism of other teams in the past Hello, Green Bay Packers with Aaron Rodgers, not really giving him a lot of chances to have input. And you see that show up in other places as well. Well, we we certainly get the sense that Josh Allen has a lot of input in what's going on at One Bills Drive. And you know he wanted Ken Dorsey to be Brian Dable's successor. That was his hand-pick offensive coordinator. Well, a season and a half later, the, it's over with, right? Ken Dorsey is out. So did and we won't know. Maybe we will. I'm recording this well before the Bills have any press conferences to talk about it to give us more insight into what went into the decision. But I wonder how much Josh had to say about this and if he wanted this and if he felt like Joe Brady was the right guy to step in. You know, we'll we'll see what is uncovered throughout the course of the week. But just letting you know something that I'm certainly thinking about. The last thing I want to talk about is what this doesn't mean, right? Because there's a there's plenty of blame to go around, folks. It's it's not just Ken Dorsey. That's a message that I've had on this podcast for weeks. It's not just Ken Dorsey. It's a lot of things. Certainly, Ken Dorsey deserves a nice big old chunk of that pie of, of blame, but it's not just Ken Dorsey. And so it's funny. A lot of the immediate reaction to this is, well, did Ken Dorsey tell Josh Allen to throw an interception or James Cook to fumble or Gabe Davis to drop a pass? Or was Ken Dorsey responsible for having 12 men on the field on the On the field goal at the end of Denver, is Ken Dorsey responsible for the all-out blitz ridiculous call that put Taron Johnson in major conflict that led to the PI that led to the game-winning field goal? No, right? Like, all of that stuff's true. But you can talk about it. Like, right now, that's the decision. Sean McDermott's not firing himself today, right? Like, everybody wants heads to roll and all these things to happen. Well, right now, the one thing that they're doing is Ken Dorsey being fired as the offensive coordinator. It does not mean that Sean McDermott is off the hook. To me, if anything, it puts him on notice, right? I mean, like, hey, your staff, your operation, not good enough. Things have to happen. McDermott is not off the hook. Josh Allen, not off the hook. A lot of things like it's this is can we just talk about it as one isolated thing? Like, okay, a lot of people thought Ken Dorsey should be fired. It happened. It doesn't mean that Sean McDermott's off the hook. 12 men is on him. Matthew Smiley, that's a problem for him as a special teams coordinator. 
the continual failures of this team, all the stuff I talked about yesterday on the recap show where I went in and really questioned if the Bills have what it takes to maximize this team under Sean McDermott and how disappointed I am in how you look at all the adversity and issues that have happened throughout the years and you you thought to yourself that they were going to be the great lesson, not learning lesson opportunities that could be applied to the future and that you could be able to uh, apply the pain to the future and it'd be better results. I, I'm, I'm still, all of that's still true. And, and Sean McDermott deserves plenty of, of, of blame for this team plateauing, for this team not maximizing what they've had over the years. Like he gets all of that blame. Certainly this year alone, look like, I know that we give him some grace for the defense because of the injuries and what it looked like before the injuries, but his defensive play calling against the Jaguars, his defensive play calling against Cincinnati and the Broncos are big reasons why the Bills lost those games. So yeah, like we can you can be mad at Sean McDermott and also like talk about Ken Dorsey being fired as a necessary step in making some changes because this operation, I think in some ways has absolutely expired. And it certainly has plateaued. And you have to ask yourself the question, is Sean McDermott the right coach that's going to get this team over the hump? Well, so far, no. So far, the answer to that is very clearly no. Is it the beginning of the end? Is this step one in a series of changes that are coming? Probably should be, folks. Probably should be. Because as you identify this next nucleus, which was a lot of what we talked about in the recap podcast, right? Some of this is expired. You have some up-and-coming players that you feel good about being a new nucleus, can Sean McDermott be the head coach that maximizes that opportunity? Because you probably get one more run here with Josh Allen in terms of of a nucleus around him. Yeah, I, Every year you have a run with Josh Allen, but when you talk about really building a, a contending roster around Josh Allen, you probably got about one more shot here. And, and you're going to hand it over to Sean McDermott to try to do something that he's telling you he's he can't do. We'll see. So this is about Ken Dorsey and the offense and all the issues there. It does not mean that Sean McDermott is off the hook. Plenty of blame to go around. As I've said, it's not, it's never one thing, folks. If you think it's one, it's one thing, that's a very small brained opinion. It's never one thing. And today the Bills made the choice to move on from Ken Dorsey. We'll see what's next. Seven games. Joe Brady running this offense. What does it look like? Certainly provides a fascinating layer to the last seven games of the 2023 NFL season for the Buffalo Bills. And of course, I'll be right here for you talking about it every step of the way. So don't miss anything. Make sure that you're subscribed. We're still going to get to the All-22 Review episode. Obviously, this is a big uh, big um, middle-of-the-day bomb that goes off that kind of sets things off. So maybe the 22 Review episode might not drop until later tonight or early on Wednesday morning, but we will absolutely get that in for you and um, talk about this team every day here on Locked on Bills. So don't miss anything. Make sure that you are subscribed. We'd love it if you took a second to rate, review, and share the podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Go Bills. And I look forward to catching up with you again in the All-22 Review.